G'day! In today's video, I'm opening up an Acer Aspire XC840. Oops, excuse me. And let's see what can be upgraded in this. Looking at the back, we have a laptop charger used on here. I'm going to assume it's the standard 65 watt laptop charger, as I don't have, it wasn't dropped in with the charger. As you can see, we have very basic I.O. Four USB ports, HDMI, VGA, Ethernet, and three channel audio, three port audio ports on there. We don't have a dedicated Wi-Fi card, so I feel like this is going to be the very basic one. I have looked at its older, slightly older brother, that XC830, and that one had very few upgrade options. So I'm going to assume that this is going to be basically the same. As we take that off, what can we see? Huh. As I say Wi-Fi, we do have Wi-Fi. Never mind, I'll go into that. Looking down here, we have 4 gig of DDR4 3200 megahertz. Another Kingston 4 gig over here. So we're running in dual channel mode. I'm not sure what actual process is in this, but I'll look that up in just a moment. To take out the RAM, which I'll just demonstrate now, if you are going to upgrade your RAM, zoom in here, get you here. These metal tabs here flick out and the existing stick should go up like that, as you can see there. From here I can grab it and pull it out. You can see the copper pins here and the gap here. We want to line that gap with this gap here. Put it in on a loose angle and then pull down. So if I go here, push it into the gap, it's just kind of sitting there, it's a bit springy. And then if I push down, it should lock in like that. So that's how it should be looking for you guys. You can do the same over here as well. And looking under here, we have a DVD drive. I'm going to assume there's a power lead hidden somewhere under here. And also we have a NVMe SSD over here. A Western Digital SN530, fairly common model, 512 gig. Very similar to what we just did with the RAM there, except we have to take out a screw first. So take out a screw with a very small Phillips head screwdriver. There to go like that. Should be able to flick this up. I believe there's a thermal pad under there holding it, which is a bit sticky. And we'll wiggle it backwards. There we go. We have one thermal pad on here. This bit here, it should kind of feel a bit damp, a bit tacky, which is exactly what I would expect from it. Sadly, my zoom isn't focusing. There we go. So if you do replace your NVMe with a larger drive, transfer this over. It should almost have like a blue tack kind of feel to it. As I said before, with the RAM, we have a notch here. I'm gonna match it up with the notch down here. Put it in on a like a 35 degree angle, 25 degree angle. Should slide in, push in, and basically drop down from there. With that drop down, pretty much fine. Just line up that screw, screw that screw in. We do have a graphics card slot down here. I think you're gonna be struggling to find anything that will actually be able to go in this single slot. Then we have no space whatsoever here. Most graphics cards are dual slot, which normally fill up both of them. And as you can see, we're down here. You probably couldn't really transition this to another motherboard or another case. You could attempt it, but I would highly recommend it as the front I.O. on here is part of the main board. So if you did swap your board this into a new case, you wouldn't probably get access to the front I.O. I take these off. One, two, three. This should hopefully come out. There we go. And we did just take off the front of the disk drive as well. As you can see, we have the I.O. down here. That's part of the, cat at the motherboard. DVD drive, a Wi-Fi antenna. And I want to take out these three screws here to see what we can see. Or actually, take out one. This one here at the back. Not sure if that's going to let me do anything extra. No. Let's take out the three at the front and see what's under here. This tray, this drive here, 
This here is an, in, an in hard drive enclosure for a 3.5 or a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD. It doesn't look to have a SATA cable included. So you would have to buy a new SATA cable to plug in down here to go up to your hard drive up here. I'm hoping with that disconnected, this will wand in the back. I need to take out that fourth screw down the bottom here. The standard Phillips head screws. And this should wand the back a bit. Maybe up a bit. No. That's enough screws holding in this hard drive cage. There we go. That one out too. We can go back. And up. I'm just going to fold this out of the way. And we can see that we have a SATA power here. So basically, and we have a Wi-Fi card down here. Same as the NVMe, that can be replaced. And we have a CMOS battery over here, a CR232. And really not much else. You can put a hard drive down here as well if you prefer. I'm going to slide this back in. Now it's a matter of putting all those screws back in. Sadly, if you want to upgrade this for gaming, there's virtually nothing you can really do to it. It is running a Celeron N40, or where is it? Depending on where I'm looking. It's either running a Celeron J515 with 8 gig of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, which I believe is probably going to be a quad core four thread processor, which is probably only going to use about 10 to 15 watts of power. And that's what I would expect. So if you're wanting to really upgrade much, or you're really not going to be able to upgrade it to play Fortnite or anything like that, the graphics card would be true more power than anything, if you could find one that fits. Which is usually commonly on the market, I don't think you're really going to be finding a single slot GPU, or at least anything that's modern or power efficient. Put that screw down here. Then to put the front back on, I'm going to slide it into these grooves down here and just fold it up, like so. These four bits should click in. And next up after that, we want to put the disk drive cover back in. There. Should just be able to line it up. Push, like so, and we're back. And lastly, if you've upgraded your RAM and whatnot, I've missed one screw, which lives down here for God knows what reason. I've not seen that connect to anything. Once you've got them all on, you should be right to put the side cover back on once more. Slide it over, make sure this bit here is exposed through the hole and put the two black Phillips head screws back on. From there, you should hopefully be able to upgrade, upgrade this basically instant e-waste machine. Wouldn't really recommend going any way to purchase it. So, that's it. That is the XC840. Hope this helps, and I'll see you later. Bye.